Hasbro has definitely tried their hand at making G1 style Bumblebee and Cliff Jumper figures. Some turned out great, some kinda eh, and others. Well, we don't talk about those. And then in 2020, Hasbro released this figure. Transformers Earthrise Cliff Jumper as a part of the first wave, along with others like Optimus Prime and Grapple. And this was the first time in a very long time that Cliff Jumper was released first in a line. His release was definitely controversial, considering that he is absolutely tiny for being a deluxe class rather than a Legends class this time around. This is due to the engineering though. This dude is way more complex than your average core class. Finally, in late 2020, after Wave 2 of Earthrise, Netflix Bumblebee came out. And oh boy, this dude was hard to get. Now, with Studio Series 86 Bumblebee on the way, I figured it would be a perfect time to discuss these two. So, without further ado, Let's dive right in. Starting off in vehicle mode, these two look fantastic together, especially Cliff Jumper in his semi Porsche 924 mode. I love how solid he feels, and the big ass Autobot logo plastered on the hood looks gorgeous. Arguably my favorite aspect of both of these guys is that there's virtually zero kibble on each vehicle mode. Bumblebee is equally if not more beautiful in his Volkswagen Beetle mode, they got the shaping here just right. In fact, this is the first W that I'll give this guy over the new one, but spoiler alert, it's one of the only. Cliff Jumper does come with the accessories to make a big ass bazooka, but these magazine looking pieces can act as what are basically supposed to be tire skates, and I think that this is really neat. It can also work for Bumblebee since he came with these pieces too. And that's basically it for the car modes, both are very detailed, very dynamic, and very very fun to mess with. Getting into the transformation for both Bumblebee and Cliff Jumper here, these two are honestly just, they're both the same mold, just retooled, so they're so similar that I'm not even going to bother filming separate elements for both the transformation and articulation schemes. So let's just get right into it, starting off with Cliff Jumper here since he came first. This transformation is very controversial because of one crucial element that happens right at step one. And that is a little bit of parts forming. That's that that wasn't a very popular idea that Hasbro decided to pull there, but let's just get into it. So, starting with the back here, you're just gonna want to rip this entire shell off of the hands where it connects, and that is kind of difficult, but it literally just plugs in via these two pegs. Focus, please. And the hands and that is what you're left with so if you lose this piece consider the vehicle mode toast basically but continuing on you just are gonna want to pop the legs down first thing i like to do here is coming around to the back and folding both of these tires in in which after your afterward you're going to want to take the foot and essentially rotate it forward and there are two little pegs right here that will clip into any one of these little holes on the tires you just have to get it lined up and boom so now he's got his big old clompers for feet so next up I'm going to want to take his arms fold them up onto the chest this one is very loose rotate the waist bring the arms down position those take this chest piece take the hood right here fold it down fold the chest piece back up bring back in the backpack and this is what he looks like without it just for 
reference, basically. Bring it back in the backpack. Just take this little uh, peg right here. You're going to want to fold that out to an angle, and it will just connect via that port right there. And bada bing, bada boom, that is Cliff Jumper in his robot mode. And basically the exact same for Bumblebee here. So let's just. Come on, thank you. This part is so finicky. I'm honestly afraid that I'm just gonna break this thing one day, especially since both of these actually. I'm, okay, since this one is made out of clear plastic, this one just has. Uh, I don't know if that's no. This one is just one solid piece, but I'm still afraid of that peg breaking, due to the fact that this figure came out when, you know. COVID was at its peak, so this plastic can give out at any point, and it has before on other people's copies, but I digress. I'm rambling on just to fill out this part of the video, I guess. Just fold these feet down, fold all this up, rotate the waist, bada bing, bada boom. Hopefully that was in focus. I'm having a lot of focusing issues here recently. That's okay. I'll get that worked on. Bada bing, bada boom. Fold that down. This guy, this arm is a hell of a lot more secure than on Cliff Jumper here. Thankfully, this peg is even harder to get out. <sighs> Come on. Yeah. Thank you. Jesus, that is tight. I don't like that. That's why I'm afraid of it breaking because this is literally attached on clear pieces for the metal hinge. That is scary. But plug that in. And there you have Bumblebee in his robot mode as well. And there you have both of them side by side. And they look great together, in my opinion. Asshole. In robot mode, Yes, again, these figures are very, very small, but this is so that they scale with other G1 minibots, and they pull it off very, very well in my opinion. There was a Cliff Jumper repaint in Buzzworthy Bumblebee that has more accurate colors to the show if you'd like to go for that version. These guys look wonderful in robot mode together. They're such a powerful duo, but I do have my issues. The backpack isn't great, the parts forming, while not the worst thing in the world, still feels absolutely lazy to me, especially when one is made out of clear fucking plastic. Also, paint chipping, this, this is really annoying to me. They do look great with the guns though, especially Cliff Jumper. And I personally prefer to give Bumblebee Cyberverse Bumblebee's gun, because this just looks fantastic in my opinion. My final issue isn't one with any engineering or design aspects with these two figures, but Bumblebee's exclusivity made this thing terribly difficult to find. This is why I'm happy we're finally getting SS86 Bumblebee. That way collectors can hopefully, hopefully get their hands on a nice chug bee in this style of mold. Without parts forming, that is. Generally speaking though, I don't have many issues with these guys at all. They are very nice to mess with and, especially in regards to their stocky proportions. Getting into the articulation for both Bumblebee and Cliff Jumper here. I'll do Bumblebee first this time, uh, considering that for transformation we started out with Cliff Jumper, so I feel it's only necessary to get focused in a little bit. There we go. Filming on a phone is so fucking difficult sometimes. He does have a ball joint at the head. He can't really do a full 360 due to the molded in collar right there, but he can look up that far look down that far but there is a secret hinge that if you kind of pull on the back of the head you can unlock that and that will give you a full range of motion right there and actually with that you can turn the head full 360. I don't know why I didn't think to say that earlier but shit happens. He does have 
wiggly waggly at the head. Thankfully, that is always important. Shoulders can do a full 360. They can go out that far, in that far. He does have a bicep swivel. 90 degrees at the elbow there. A little bit of wrist swivel, waist swivel. Hips can kick forward that far, backward that far. He does have a beautiful spread right there. He does have a thigh swivel as well. Basically 90 degrees at the knee there and ankles can pivot. So Bumblebee here is very poseable. And the same goes for Cliff Jumper. He does also have that secret joint. He has everything that Bumblebee has just in red. So that is how poseable they are and these two are honestly very dynamic they, they are very poseable and i'm very happy that both of them are because in my opinion it just makes it a little more worth the pricing overall i like these two a lot i can see why some might take issue with them but for me i'm pretty satisfied they work well together and i'm excited to see what studio series has to offer so if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, please be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. And with all of that being said, guys, this has been That Nerd Isaac 2006, and I am rolling out. Peace.